So this is the work to be done today. So we're going to start with a sketch of the actual space, which we'll have to get through via cheating means. This direction is north. Put the straight side. Okay. is I'm gonna wall this in. Wall this in. And if there's only one person, this can be managed. Uh, there's currently two settlers here. I'm gonna leave those two settlers. With the theme of hunt, my idea is that this is going to be just a hunter shack, except a really fancy one, obviously. I'll put uh, like a guard tower, maybe there. And then maybe one here, right here. So this will be sort of a tower that's coming out of the hole in the in the ceiling, and then it's going to be connected via bridges and whatever to this. And I had this idea where the only entrance to this compound right here is back here. So there's um, there's like those boat doors. tire. I'm going to move it about 50 feet down down the coast right here. And maybe even sit it up so the house structure that you can climb up, that is the theory anyway, and the platform up here. And this will allow you to go probably across the roof here, and then there will be a bridge off this way to one of the guard towers, and then you can go over here, and then there will be a bridge down to the boathouse. And you go upstairs, and this is how you access the guard towers. One thing I was thinking about when I was thinking about what I was thinking about was that I was thinking about thinking about thinking. Uh when conceptualizing this structure is well my brother is a hunter and I was wondering what would be useful for him in the post-apocalypse what would a hunter need uh, they need a place to dress their kill I think that's the right terminology and they need a place to live obviously you know shelter um, but there's also the fact that you'd be living here alone right this would be just you and another person in this case. So in this situation, these people are living out here. They're hunting for their livelihoods. But also, you know, there's the potential for raider attacks at any moment. So they have to, it, they have to be prepared. So we have to make it so that only one person can man it. In which case, you have to wall the entire house in. Make it so that you have multiple high points to attack them from. So something I realized while I was working on it just now, if the only entrance for this place is by water and they're hunters, how are they gonna get their meat in there? They're just gonna throw it over the wall? That's stupid. I need to come up with a better solution. Um, I don't have one. So I had this idea, like, yeah. There's these bridges here, right? And I was struggling with this because I don't want them to be straight across. And so my thought process was it's gonna be like a suspended bridge. But of course, in Fallout 4 settlement mode, I don't know of any possible scenario where I could find a suspension bridge. Um, with the master plan mod, there is 
uh, an additional mod that is called Stairs, Ladders, and Ramps. And one of them actually gives you a real life ladder. So I'm gonna stack these ladders, scale them up a little bit using the Place Everywhere mod, and then flop them down. It'll kind of like have a bow to it. So it'll look like they're connected by the, by the, um, what do you call it, the, this part. Not the rungs, but the other part. The part holding up the rungs. I'm an engineer. It's sort of like tied together like that because it feels like a pretty DIY solution. So this is the super clever part. I'm going to use the wires from like generators or whatever to act as rope. I didn't want anything that looked super artificial, but I was kind of leaning towards like I'm going to wind up having to do it anyway. But I think this is a good, I think this is a good compromise. Let's call it that. It's a compromise. Uh, it's a, maybe a little unrealistic, but at the same time, I think it's the closest to realism that we could possibly hope for. So in doing the guard tower, the first one, uh, the one that's actually in the water, I have learned that the suspension bridges are actually the most difficult part. The placing of the ladders is easier than I expected it to be. Because the ladders don't snap to each other, but they will snap to a platform, and apparently a platform will snap to the top of the ladder just as well as it'll snap to the bottom. And so, it's a little convoluted, but a lot less convoluted than I thought it was going to be. The thing that really messes it up is positioning the plywood and boards um, so that you don't get stuck in the ladder. Because you gotta like angle them and then you inch them back and forth and then you gotta angle them again and then you inch them back and forth to make sure that they're just sitting on top of the ladder instead of sunk into it or sunk weirdly at a strange angle. Um, for some of them, for a lot of them, you can just copy with the Place Everywhere mod, you can just copy the angle placement. But for some of them, particularly the ones that are transitioning from one ladder to another, you have to manually do that. I'm using power connectors and shrinking them and growing them depending on my need and then connecting like a, a plank from a railing or something to the underside of the ladder so that it looks like it's connected underneath the plywood. I did have this moment of trying to figure out how to make it look tied to the plank and also to the ladder. And I was like, well, how do they do it in the suspension bridge over at Ten Pines? And I'll just, I'll show it right now. Um, it's really not elegant at all. On the, f on the side farthest from Ten Pines, the bolt that's, the bolts are actually in rock which seems sort of impractical, but on top of that, um, and also there's no cracks in the rock, so there's that. On top of that, the one bolt, or the one, I guess it's probably a railroad spike or something, is facing the wrong direction to actually anchor the rope. As a result, I sort of lowered my bar of believability. I think mine are more believable, but I would prefer if it looked like it was tied off. For Taffington Boathouse, I wanted to keep everything very closed, very shut off, because I had this idea of just a couple of people staying there, the two people being Lexi and Eletra, just living off the land and providing meat and stuff for other communities that they're connected to. And I just thought that was a really cool idea, but the thing is, with the way of the world of Fallout 4, holding on to a place like that with just two people would be nearly impossible. So the towers are actually, actually turned out really cool. They are a combination of scaffolding and rails and stuff like that, but the bridges themselves are ladders, as I've discussed before. And that process was a giant pain in the ass to make those. It was actually a lot simpler to do it with those than it would have been with stairs, because the pivot point, so if you imagine the stairs, um, my hand is the stairs, and like there's a platform here. The pivot point for stairs is like the center. So to try and rotate them is kind of like this. To do the ladder is like this. Like the pivot point is at the bottom. Way easier to place. 
the best part is you could put a platform, take a platform, put the the ladder here, and then pivot it to the spot where you want it, and then you put another platform on the other end because it snaps to it, and you can you can't snap ladders together. <laughs> you can't snap ladders together, but you can snap a platform to the top of the ladder and then snap another ladder onto the onto the new platform. I don't think I absolutely could not have done this without place everywhere. The precision rotation and translation part of place everywhere is the thing that really made all of this possible. Not to mention the ability to copy the attributes from one ladder. What I was doing when I was placing like planks and stuff is take the rotation of the ladder and apply that to the plank. Then you just kind of shift it in place so that it's sitting as close to the lungs as you can. The walls make it feel more claustrophobic, which is great. I think that works for the space. So let's just, let's, let's talk about design a little bit. My thought process when doing this was just... Pikachu. Quiet. Shh. Can you be quiet? Okay. Having the single entrance, and then there's an entrance in the back, but it's, it's not an entrance. It's more like a lookout point. Um, so there's only two doors through the wall. There's one in the front and there's one in the back that's barricaded around and also there's water nearby so you can't really get into it from the, the water. So your one base, uh, your one entryway is there's a trap there and it's really easy to uh, attack using the guard towers. There's a sniper turret. There's Really what I was going for was maximum defensibility with minimum manpower. Like, I think that this fortress could be easily defended with just one person, I think. The interior, on the other hand, I really went to town on, like, making it modern. So very simple, very simple placement and very simple... Uh, furniture. I tried to not clutter the space up too much. It's just, it's a space that two people will live in and two people who are, who really want their space to be functional in one specific way, being hunting. So the first and second floors are kind of contemporary, typical housing units, and I wanted them, those areas to feel very contemporary and very commonplace. The upper deck is sort of just like a deck. It's like a sun deck. Um, there's places for drinks. There's uh, Takahashi is there hanging out on, on there, just checking out the scenery. And um, that's also the way that you access the various guard towers. Oh, there's not really much else to say. I went with something very basic because I thought that that would make the most sense for the story I'm trying to tell with Elettra and Lexi, who, by the way, I think are my favorite names. Elettra, I don't remember, I don't remember Elettra's last name, um, but it's close to Elektra, which I find funny for some reason, and maybe because of her hair? I don't know. What does that have to do with her hair? And uh, Lexi Dodge, which I find even more funny. It's like a cartoon version of a name. I changed Electra's outfit, but Lexi, um, I didn't change hers. She has fur pants and a tank top. Enjoy the tour.